Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news as Manchester United receive a bid of £75 million for Marcus Rashford from PSG. Well, I say, say receive a bid, expect to receive a bid according to the Mirror. We'll talk about that. John Murta is expected to stay at Manchester United after impressing uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe. We'll be talking about that. We've also got the latest on Anthony uh, Kobe Maynou's uh, England call-up and also what's going on with Tadebo. A little bit about Mason Greenwood as well and a lot more to talk about. Uh, if you're watching live, you can see in the chat we've got um, a poll going on at the moment in relation to would you sell Marcus Rashford to PSG for £75 million? 86% of you are saying yes. I can't speak. I can't speak. 86% would sell Marcus Rashford for 75 million. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's pure profit, says Francis. I suppose it is, actually. But um, look, a very um, exclusive bit of information on the Rashford deal coming up for you. So hold your breath on that one. Also want to get your thoughts on uh, Murta staying. Is it a big deal if he does? Um, and everything else as well. And um, why we're not going to sell Anthony in the summer has sort of come out, but we told you that anyway. Uh, Cracker from Sancho, Dortmund leading already. This is Man United 8888. Um, all I would say about Jaden Sancho is good. Uh, very, very good. I hope he scores a hat trick every week. Remember, he did this in Dortmund before and we made a big mistake signing him. So if we can get rid of him in the summer because he's playing well, absolutely fantastic. I don't want him back. Um, anyway. Let me just say, we are sponsored by Manscaped. That is why that is next to me. Scan the QR code, 20% off, free worldwide shipping with the code TUS. The scanning the QR, QR code with your camera phone will take you to the website or you can go through the link in the description. What's Manscaped? Precision engineering for your family jewels with the lawnmower. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. Absolutely fantastic product. It wants it wants to get to work straight away. Uh, you've got a light on there for a more precise shave. It's waterproof as well. And um, uh, really, really good product in the hand. You can feel the quality in there. Uh, they've also got the uh, weed whacker for up your nose if you have nasal hair. You've also got the handyman, which will give you a nice clean shave very, very quickly. And uh, you can walk around with that. And handyman, as I say. And then this is the one I use, the beard trimmer. 11 different lengths. And uh, it's really quick at getting it done. I can get my whole face done in under a minute. And uh, that is quick, as men will tell you. So check out Manscaped. Uh, they've got you covered in all your male grooming. 20% off, free worldwide shipping with the code exclusively TUS. Stands for the United Stand. TUS, free worldwide shipping and 20% off. Big shout out to Manscaped. Okay, um, let's get on with the show. Jacob Beavers says, Evening, Mark. If Rashi does leave, would you say he's had a successful United career for the time he's been here? And uh, Catchup says, Well, no, I think Rashford's been a, a you know a really interesting player for Man United. He's, a, he's had a better career than most Man United players in the last 10 years. Um, has he lived up to the heights we wanted him to? Absolutely not. Has he hit heights? Yes. Has he shown potential to be something really special? Yes. PSG is going in a new direction with going for a balanced team and not crazy on spending on individual players. Plus, they have five players in the position Rashford to play already. It's strange, says Catchup. I'd sell Rashford for £75, says Paul Higgins. Well, look, where is this coming from, first of all? Let me tell you. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, it is a bit of a weird one because... Um, Really interesting where this is coming from, I think. It's coming from the, the, Daily, Ma the Daily Mirror. Uh, and it's coming from... Um, oh, let me remember who is... Is it Mullock? Yeah, Disco Mirror. Um, it's coming from Disco Mirror. Um, David McDonnell in the Daily Mirror saying that PSG are preparing a £75 million bid for Marcus Rashford this summer. Manchester United value Marcus Rashford closer to £100 million. Now, the thing that makes this interesting is that... And, you know... Repet you know, longevity makes a source stronger. You know, Fabrizio Romano is a stronger source than he was in his first six months because he's been doing it for longer. And I think with the mirror, there are a couple of journalists with the mirror that since Eric Ten Hag has come in here, and look, Malps is laughing about the Daily Mirror. You, well, we're all going to be laughing at you, Malps, because you haven't listened to what I'm going to say and you obviously haven't been listening over the last 18 months. Since Eric Ten Hag, I, I, I never, I'm like you, Malps, I never would have took the Daily Mirror seriously as a, as a source for Manchester United news. But I'm telling you now, consistently, over the last 18 months, 
there's a couple of journalists at the Mirror that have been very accurate around stuff to do with Man United and Ten Hag. And I, I, that, that's just a fact. Now, is that a massive, massive coincidence? Or has somebody at the Mirror actually got a good source into Manchester United? I would say it's probably the latter because they've hit pretty much since Ten Hag came in, they've been very close on information from Manchester United. So that's that's a fact. And I don't care whether it's the Sun, the Mirror, the Daily Star, whoever. I will acknowledge, like look at Mike Keegan in the Daily, Daily Mail on the sale of Manchester United, probably the best, probably the best. And no one saw that coming, not because Mike Keegan's a bad journalist, but he was well sourced and this can happen. And I think there is a, well, a good source around Man United in the mirror. Um, who knows how long that continues? So I think it's interesting when the mirror says Man United and PSG uh, are expecting this £75 million bid for Marcus Rashford. What I will say is, and it's not an exclusive because it's about 10 days old. What did I tell you a week last Monday? Manchester United right now are not selling Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes or Scott McTominay. They are not for sale. Now, that's going to upset some people because they're going to go, well, what's different with Ineos then? If they're saying that certain players are not for sale and they're not playing well, what's different between Ineos and the Glazers? And more importantly, what's the point in a strategic review if you're already saying players are not for sale? That's not how you run a football club. You cannot say somebody's not for sale before the summer because you've decided you want to keep them. 86% of this community tonight would sell Marcus Rashford. I reckon if you put that on Twitter, you'd probably have over 70%, 80% again. That's the feeling of fan support around Marcus Rashford at the moment. It's sad, but it's true. So why are Man United not willing to sell Marcus Rashford. And and that's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. So when I read that mirror story, it's interesting, but it's completely contradictory to what I would describe as an A-star source that Man United are not putting up for sale Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay. Those three players will be on the tour and starting for Manchester United next season. That's what's coming out of Man United. So Look, I can't move away from that. I can give you my opinion, but I can't move away from that. So the mirror is saying that. I've been told that. I think other people have probably been told the same thing as well. But Rashford's not up for sale. Man United don't want to sell Marcus Rashford. And Marcus Rashford doesn't want to leave Manchester United. Now, that, that might piss, piss a few people off, but sometimes the truth hurts. And that's where we are. He's not up for sale and he doesn't want to leave. Whether he should be up for sale is a different matter, but he's not up for sale. So that's what that's what I think. That that's my thought. Um, I I I you know it's a tough one. Um, it's a tough one. Um, I think that. Um, well, hold on. Mario Franco's just said something about what's this? Mario Franco says, "Have you seen the news about Mason Greenwood to Barcelona for thirty to forty million? But I think that's slow sports news, mate. I mean, we're talking about this. We've been talking about this for weeks that Barcelona want him. We've been talking for weeks that his value will be about 40 million quid. And John Murta was in Barcelona on Monday. I mean, I don't think it's breaking news that Barcelona are going to sign Mason Greenwood. I think it's very obvious that that's the most likely thing that's going to happen. I think Barcelona and Man United are trying to keep it quiet. Oh, yeah. John Murta was only was pictured having a meeting with Deco because... It's just a normal meeting. Yeah, he's not, he's not got a lot to do. It's not like we've got the biggest summer in 20 years coming up. He's just gone over to Barcelona to have a chat with Deco. Nothing, no, there's nothing nothing suspicious about that. Um, yeah, I don't think Mason Greenwood to Barcelona is anything to uh, get overly excited about. I think there's an, inevit an inevitability to, to it. He might, he might not go there, but I think that's definitely what they're talking about. Rashford needs to go for the dressing room, says Connor. More than anything else, too much power and influence. He low-key runs the show. He is a very powerful player at Manchester United, Connor. Um, everybody knows that. Whether that's a positive or a negative, that's for Ineos to decide. But they, they don't want to sell him. He doesn't want to go. Um, I don't think PSG want him. I, I think PSG is the only place he can go and I don't think they want him. I don't think anyone wants Rashford. 
That's my honest interpretation. So I think it's a good thing that we don't want to sell him because I don't think anybody bloody wants him anyway. So I think the fact that Man United want him is a, want, want to keep him is a positive. Because if they wanted to sell him, they'd be stuck in the same position that they are with Sancho and Anthony, where it's hard to find a buyer. I don't think there's a buyer for Marcus Rashford. That, that's my first stance. I genuinely don't think if Rashford wanted to go, his agent could find him a move. I don't think there is a move out there. I don't think there's anybody willing to pay him the wages and as the money. I don't. So that's one. Point two, he's not up for sale anyway. Point three, he doesn't want to go. So he will be a Man United player next year. What I'm hoping is that next year... You know, it's almost like it's a bit like um, it's a bit like plowing your fields, isn't it? Sometimes a farmer, you know, leaves a field for a year and then the next year he'll grow the crops. And I think with Rashford, he's had a shit year this year. So hopefully next year he'll have, you know, one year on, one year off. Next year he'll be brilliant again. I wouldn't be surprised if he was brilliant again. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if United have a good, if, you know, I, th I, th I think he'll have a good year next year. Um, um, so look, I, I, I don't think this is true. Patrick says Rashford is a frustrating player. He can be incredible like last season or poor like this one. Fans are selling because the inconsistency kills us, um, says Patrick. Uh, no more Rashford, no more leaks, says Bradley. Uh, and also um, saw Barca might sell Alahu if deal 100 million plus. I know in all likely it won't happen, but if we had 200 million, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to spend 100 million pounds on a centre back Parker. Um, Richard says he hasn't delivered all season and his attitude stinks and um, is there any movement on Ashworth are the two clubs any closer to working out in a no not heard anything Lee um, so yeah look I, I think the big thing I would say is a lot of you clearly want Rashford to go I think there's a lot of people in the fan base that do want Rashford to go um, I've always said I wouldn't sell him um, and that hasn't changed Sh I mean, people might be quite sh shocked by that but uh, that hasn't changed I, I wouldn't sell him because I don't think it's um, I think it's too big a deal to do in the summer I think there's there's more players that need to go before Marcus Rashford and, and anybody who says you're wrong well I'm not wrong it's my opinion I think that there are so many players we need to move on this summer that the likes of Bruno and Rashford really aren't this summer deals to do but what I will concede is, and I did say it last week when I got told it, when I was told that Rashford, McTominay and Bruno are not for sale this summer, my instant response was, that's wrong. And it is wrong. And people will say, well, you're a hypocrite because you said you wouldn't sell them. That's not my point. We shouldn't be in a position in March where we're saying certain players aren't for sale, especially when they're players that aren't playing well. If you're doing a strategic review and you're trying to reinvent the wheel and this is a fresh start and a reset, you can't just say three underperforming players aren't under consideration for sale. I think you can get to that point in May, but you shouldn't be saying in March they're not for sale. And that's what that's apparently that's the case. And I, that's where I disagree. I would probably get to May and reassess the Rashford situation. And if it's a complete shit season and an offer comes in, I might be tempted. But in March, to be saying not for sale, not listening to any bids, I think that's a, I, th I just think that's not the way to run a football club. I don't, I don't think this is the way Liverpool would run it. I don't think the way this is Man City would. I, we shouldn't be making decisions before we've got the director of football. We shouldn't be making decisions before we know who the manager is going to be. And we shouldn't be making decisions before a strategic review is completed. This is how we made mistakes in the past. This is like, this is like Jose Mourinho saying, I want to sell Anthony Martial. And the Glazers saying, you're not selling him. He's one of our favourite players. That's not how you run a football club. So I wouldn't sell Rashford. But I don't agree with the fact that he's not for sale in March. Like that, to me, smells a little bit like the last 10 years where we make decisions on players for non-footballing reasons. Like he's on too big a wage. He's too important to the strategic vision of the football club. He's mank born and bred. Whatever the reason is, I don't think it's a footballing one at the moment. We should be making decisions based on football. And it doesn't matter how big your wage is or how big your reputation is. If you don't deliver in a Man United shirt, then your job should be under scrutiny. And I think Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Scott McTominay, Harry Maguire, Varane, Casemiro, whoever you want to name, there's a lot of players that at this moment in time should be under scrutiny. And 
I think that's how you take a club like Manchester United from where they are now to where Man City is. By basically instilling an attitude that nobody's safe while we're not performing. And what we're doing is, actually, is we're saying, Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, even though we're in the midst of a shit season and we might have to sack another manager, you're all safe. What message does that send out? You're not playing well, but guess what? You're not for sale either. How are you going to deliver sporting excellence if you're saying, underperforming players, you'll be here next year? Where's the motivation in that? Where's the fear in that? And that's my problem with it. Why is it that we know already United will not be selling Rashford? They will not be selling McTominay. They will not be selling Bruno. That's not a strategic review. And these are the things that do need to be discussed because that doesn't sound to me like, you know, reinventing the wheel or a completely different approach or a reset. That sounds to me like we'll do a little bit but the Glazers are still here, so we won't do everything. And we won't succeed if we don't do that. You you know, if, if I honestly can't happen in football, but honestly, if I was Man United, really, I'd also be... I, I, there's a part of me that would just like to start again. I, and that is, you know, just a billion pounds, build your squad, you know. Obviously, there's certain players I would keep, but I think I think there's a massive open heart surgery, as Rangnick said. I think you entertain it to show players no player is bigger than the club, says Bezard, and we need a sacrificial lamb. It should be Rashford, says God's will. I like Marcus as much as I'd like him to stay at the team. My issue is his lack of consistency. I also seems like when he goes through a low spell, he tends to lose all interest in being there, says Z3. The club is unreliable with its PR anyway, Marks says Terence. And what kind of signings could United get in the summer to help Rashford support Rashford's style of play, says Sullivan. Um, you know what? He will be here next season. People need to get used to that. I'm comfortable with that because I think he'll probably have a really good season next season. But I think there's two really good points there. One, how do you get the best out of this player? Wrong question. Right question. Can he play in a team like Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool? And the answer is no. Maybe... Maybe. He can't play for Man City. Absolutely not. He doesn't do any of the things that Pep would want in relation to um, work rates, possession, retention. It wouldn't work. Arsenal, if he was at his absolute best, could he dislodge Martinelli? Not on this season, but at his absolute best, he'd struggle with the retention and possession aspects of the game. But I, I think maybe Liverpool... It's probably a no, isn't it? Um, and I'm talking about Rashford at his very best here, by the way. So my issue with, with a player like this is, and I've said it about Bruno as well, no doubt top quality player when he's at his best, but does he suit the style of football a possession-based final third team does? And that's the thing that we've never seen develop with Marcus. And I, you know, I've said it about Bruno as well. So I think that it's not about... United's mistake has been trying to get the best out of Rashford and Bruno. I think we need to build a team. And if they don't suit it, they've got to adapt or go. I think that's the way to do it. I think we've spent two or three years building teams around Rashford and Bruno. I think we need to build our own vision, which is what I was encouraged by when Sir Jim Radcliffe said, we're going to tell our manager how we want to play. And that has to go for the players as well. We can't play to the strengths of our best players anymore we need to build a vision of what how we want to play and the players need to fall into line with that. And if they can't, then, you know, they, they need to go. Um, but you know what as well? Rashford leaving Manchester United doesn't happen, have to happen this summer. It can be next summer and it can be the summer after that. You know, you don't, you don't need to be in a rush to do this because he could have a really good season next year, in which case you'll regret selling him. If he has another bad year, you can always sell him next summer. You don't have to get everything done in one summer either. I think the big problem with Rashford, looking at the chat and looking at social media and talking to people, you know, out and about, Rashford obviously gets brought up a lot. I think his big problem at the moment is that he has lost a lot of support. You know, the well of, um, you know, support has run dry. 
And, and that can happen to anybody. But you look at Rashford a couple of years ago, everything he was doing off the pitch, everything he was doing on the pitch, there was a lot of goodwill around Rashford. And if he did anything bad or he had a bad performance, he could go to that well, drink from the well, and it was still very much a lot of support. I think it's gone dry this year for a multitude of reasons. And I think actually the reason a lot of people want to sell Marcus Rashford is not really because they don't believe he could score 30 goals next year, because you're a fool if you don't think he could score 30, score 30 goals next year. He did it last year after a bad season the year before. He could easily score 30 goals next year. I think the problem with Rashford at the moment is he's at a massive, massive disadvantage because for whatever reason, he has lost that, you know, affection from a lot of the fans. Can you win that back? course you can and that's the first thing he needs to do and that's why I think you judge him in May because we've got two massive months we're playing Liverpool on Sunday if he scores a hat trick you know suddenly that well is filling up again and and, and that's what he needs to do because talk of selling him at the moment is somewhat imbalanced because people have had enough or are frustrated with him or you know don't feel attached to him so it's like sell him if he had a really good end to the season and you said sell him, people would, I think there'd be a, a very, very different change. It's just a, it's a, a double low point at the moment, I think. And yeah, the attitude on the pitch doesn't look right. The performances on the pitch are not right. So £75 million for a player that's underperforming is a lot of money as well. I mean, let's not... Here's the answer then, before we move on. If Man United wanted to sell Rashford or Rashford wanted to go, do I think £75 million is the right price? I'd like 100, but 75's not bad. It's not It's not bad. I'd like 100, but it's not bad, 75, based on if he wanted to go and United wanted to sell him and it's pure profit. It's not bad, 75. It's not bad. Um, Red Devil says embarrassing. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you, you need to add more to your sentence. Uh, Arnie says, why are you protecting Rashford? Mate, if you think, oh, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I will just stop. I will go and watch EastEnders or something. Like, what? What is, what is the problem with what I've just said? I've explained something that's opposition to you. And I've also said the reason I think people want to sell Rashford is because he's not playing well and because people have had enough of him. So, so where's the, where's the, where am I wrong? Why do you want to sell him then? You, you just don't like the fact that he's right footed. Like, you want to sell him because you've had enough of him and you don't think he's good enough. So where am I wrong? Or is or is your problem because I'm saying I wouldn't be making the decision on selling him now. I'd wait until the end of the season. What's wrong with that? But also, I'm not Ineos. He ain't for sale, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to blame it on anybody, blame it on them. I'm not the owner of Man United and I'm not the director of football either. Not, no manager would want to lose Rashford, says Robert. And uh, Gabe says, Hi, Mark. This is my first Super Chat as a member, but I watch United stand religiously. Do you think Murta would work better now under a sporting structure? Well, this is the next thing we're going to talk about. Welcome to the Members Club, Gabby. Um, I think you entertain it to show players no player is bigger than the club, says Bazard. Yeah, that's what we were talking about there. Um, I want to talk about Murta now, but let me just catch up on a few of these. Um, Rick says, it's the lack of effort for what we pay him. It's not just one game. You can't have players doing this week in, week out. Um, Stu says, he hasn't played well all season and his attitude stinks. Um, Warren G says, he's got to stop the moody attitude. Um, and uh, Tyrrell says, he's he's washed and finished. Um, and uh, GG says, it's the attitude you have for McTominay versus Rashford. Crazy inconsistent. Um, uh, right, OK. So let me just explain this one for you. If I have lasagna and I have beans on toast and I treat beans on toast badly compared to lasagna, that's because lasagna and its ingredients are better than beans on toast. I don't have to treat Scott McTominay and Marcus Rashford the same because they're not. Marcus Rashford's ceiling is here. And Scott McTominay's ceiling is here. Scott McTominay's passion and effort is here. And Rashford looks to be down here. I don't want to keep Scott McTominay. He's not good enough. Passion's not enough. Rashford actually is good enough to play for Man United. The question is why he isn't. So if you think me wanting to sell Scott McTominay and not necessarily selling Rashford is unfair. Well, I say to you, 
your assessment of talent is unfair because Marcus Rashford's talent is up here and McTominay's is down here. Some things are worth fighting for, some things aren't. If you think differently, that's fine. But saying that McTominay and Rashford are basically the same thing and should be treated the same is absolutely nonsense, in my opinion. Um, feeling e Feel even if Rashford scores, his gesture about talks will piss more fans off. Why is McTominay not for sale? Not better than Mainu, a box-to-box -box player, not an attacking midfielder or a DM. I don't know why he's not for sale. It's not up to me, Srinivasan. I don't know. Um, JS says... Uh, uh, are you aware of the news coming out today? Ajax CEO planning to approach Ten Hag to return Ajax. JS, it's, it's, it, 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 it's old news. It wasn't today. It was two days ago. It's ridiculously speculative. Um, and I, I wouldn't even describe it, describe it as new. The merchandise value of Rashford is high. And if he has a good season next year, all the kids will want a shirt with his name on it, says Tony. Tony, I would love to tell you you're a prat. So Tony is basically saying Rashford's value to the club is massive in shirt sales and merchandise so they won't sell him. I'd love to say that that is the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. But I'm actually just going to acknowledge Tony as potentially hitting on the most niche intelligent point we've discussed all night. And I'll tell you for why. There was a piece today about Ineos appointing what is effectively... Uh, a troubleshooting company to come into Manchester United, assess all employees and look at ways to cut costs. If they're going to pay for somebody to come in to be sacking people on 30 grand a year, 30 grand a year, then suddenly Tony's point about what Rashford brings in in shirt sales and merchandise becomes very relevant. Because if sell it, sacking people on 30 grand a year is important to save money, then however much Marcus Rashford brings in in merchandise is going to be a lot more than 30 grand a year. So as stupid as it sounds, and it might be stupid, there might be something in that. I wouldn't, dismiss, I wouldn't dismiss it out of hand. If we're so desperate to save money that we're going to be sacking people on not a lot of money, then maybe Marcus Rashford's Brand value to Man United is actually important. I don't know. Mark, my biggest problem... I, mean, Mark, Mark, I would hope that's not the only reason we want to keep him anyway. Mark, my biggest problem with Rashford is I've lost respect for him because there's a lack of effort. He was trying uh, just before poor performance and I can accept it, but no effort I can't accept. I think there was a lot more effort in the last couple of games, to be fair. Um, McTominay is the sauce. Rashford is the lasagna, says Arif. Uh, I've got a question for you, says Lee. In, if you had £12 million now, would you bring in Ashworth immediately or release Eric immediately? Ten Hag in, says Lee. Um, Ashworth in. Um, wouldn't it be better to take £75 million this summer than risk uh, going less next summer if he has another bad season, says Shallow. And Anthony for £80 million plus and Rashford for £75 million. How, says Frank. And uh, thank you very much for that. Um, look, OK, if you're tuning in a little bit late, there's talk of a bid coming in from PSG for Marcus Rashford. Most fans would take it, 75 million. Um, truth, not for sale. Truth, I don't think PSG will... Well, it's not truth. I don't think PSG will go for him. Truth, I don't think anybody's looking to buy Marcus Rashford this summer. So not for sale, as far as the club are concerned. We'll be here next season. Um, next thing I want to say... Talking about John Murta, um, this would be a big story in itself normally. So Rob Dawson, ESPN, John Murta has really impressed Sir David Brailsford and Sir Jim Radcliffe in the short time they've worked together and they're looking to keep him at Manchester United in some shape or form. This has uh, frustrated some people when you look at social media. Why is he staying? He's, you know presided over a festering turd at Manchester United for the last couple of years. You know, it's been an embarrassment. Why would you keep somebody like that at the football club? Um, I've got an interesting take on this. Probably going to upset people again. Um, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, look, I, I don't know John Murta the person. I know people who do know John Murta the person and they've said he's a nice bloke. Um, the words I've heard is massively overpromoted. Like he has failed because he's been put into a position he can't do. As a director of football, 
he clearly is not good enough to do it at a club like Manchester United. However, the feedback is nice bloke and he does have skills. If Sir Jim Radcliffe and Sir David Brailsford have gone, is a good guy who benefits this this company, this this club in a different role, then why not do it? You know what? If I walk into a business and I've got somebody who's in a position uh, who needs sacking, and then when I start working with them, I realise, you know what? You've got some attributes that if we move you to here, you'd be a real value to the club. Why would I sack him? Need to bring someone in here and there? Like, if we can get him to do a role we need to be done, and you don't sack him, you've saved money in a, in a way. We know we're getting a new director of football, but there's all sorts of other positions as well. There's head of recruitment. There's technical recruitment. So, look, um, I, I don't really care. I honestly do not care. I am not that agenda-driven or bitter that John Murta needs to be booted out of the club. You don't collect £200 as you pass go, go straight to prison, whatever. I'm not bothered about that. The, the point is, he shouldn't be director of football. He shouldn't have the position he's got. And if they're going to find a lower position for him within the football club, I'm sure they will have spoken to him, you know, assessed him. And if they think he's got skills... And remember, Ineos are meant to be appointing best in class. So if they think he's got the skills they need for a certain role in that football club, then who am I to say, no, get rid of him? He, you know, ridiculously, ridiculously poor uh, as a director of football. But, you know, in a, in a different position, I don't know why people are getting their knickers in, the in a twist. We're going to get a director of football... If the, if the story was we're not getting Dan Ashworth anymore, we're keeping John Murta, I would really start to say, shit, this is really starting to sound like Ineos are a front for the Glazers. But no, that, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the mail have been good regarding Ten Hag, but why would PSG say they will make it uh, as opposed to just making the bid? Why give United time to convince him to stay, says Damo? Um... Some people are saying he might be the toilet cleaner. Um, I, 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 you know, just going back to that Rashford thing for a moment. Um, why would Marcus Rashford want to go to PSG? That, that's the thing as well. The players, everyone wants to sell him. Some people want to keep him. But the player has to be, he's, he's just signed a massive contract. He's only one year into a massive contract. Doesn't need to go. Mank, born and bred, probably very happy in Manchester. Doesn't need to go. So... There's a lot of components in a sale and that none of it adds up at the moment. It just doesn't. Um, yeah, so the murder thing there, get your thoughts in on that. I don't really have a, have a massive issue with it. Um, just on John Murter as well. Um, this is true. So do what you like. We've been, he's been at Barcelona this week talking to Deco, their sporting director, about Mason Greenwood. Um, Real Madrid, he's going to talk to Real Madrid. He's going to Portugal and Italy as well to speak clubs there. So, you know, it, these things are happening and they're happening very, very, very visibly as well. So um, just, just to keep you abreast of what's going on there. Uh, Bremer has got a £43 million release clause as per Peter Hall. What are your thoughts on that? So Bremer is the centre-back at Juventus, Mario. OK, we can skip the Anthony thing and we'll come to that for a moment. I need to talk about Maynard as well. Mohamed, thank you very much for your super chat. So, look, let's talk about Bremer at Juventus. Uh, centre-back, um, release clause, £43 million. Pounds. Uh, I think he's an interesting player, Bremer. I, I don't know loads about him. And Juventus has always been my Italian club, but I haven't watched a lot of Serie A this year. So I, I don't want to commit and say this guy's going to solve our problems. Um, he's an interesting player. Um, he's certainly, you know, when I've spoken to people who do know about him and, and that league, they've said, look, looks like a really interesting player. And if he's well scouted, he, he could be a solution for Manchester United. Um I think it's it's it, it's interesting how, and I mentioned this morning, Edison Atalanta. Keep an eye on that. Tadebo is the player I've always been told to keep an eye on, and Elise as well. So those three players, as far as I'm concerned, are the top three players. If I was asked what three players are Man United going to sign this summer, I'd say Edison, Elise, Tadebo, based on what I've been told and 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 what I know. Of course, we're signing a striker. Haven't got a bloody clue haven't got this is so weird i'm going to talk about the center back and bramer but it's so weird like we are going to sign a striker 
I haven't got a bloody clue. And I don't know anybody who does. Like, really good sources don't know. Like, it's... And what I was told is, Man United probably don't know. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean they're not going to buy one, because they are. I just don't think they've settled on somebody yet. Um, so that's going to be really exciting. The striker, I don't know. Nobody seems to know. But we will get one. Um, Sporting as a second striker. Victor... Gios, G I can't pronounce his name. He's the, he's the guy who was at Coventry. Um, we've, we've spoken about him before, but I, I don't know where, anything about that, Mohamed, as I said. But look, going back to the centre-back, Bremer, um, who I believe is right-footed, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Tadebo is the, is the player, I think, that Man United should go for. And I know a lot more about him because we were looking at him last summer. We've always been linked to him very, very strongly. So I've, I've kept an eye on him, sure, like many of you have. He looks really, really good. Now, a story came out today, and Beth was talking about it this afternoon, that um, they want 50, 51 million pounds, and Manchester United are reluctant to pay that. They think it's too much money. And also, hello, Nice own, um, Ineos own Nice. But the article goes on to say that won't have any impact on the price being reduced. Bullshit. Absolute nonsense. Salzburg RB sold Sesco to Leipzig RB at 50% the value that they were going to sell him to us or Chelsea. I don't buy that bullshit that Nice are going to say, I know you own us, Sir Jim, but we're not selling. Who's saying it? I mean, I read it today and I was like, you know, who's saying this? So, so Jim Radcliffe owns Nice and he owns 25% of Man United. But then somebody is saying, well, there won't be a discount even though Sir Jim owns Man United and Nice. So what's Sir Jim Radcliffe doing? Is he in a room going, I'm Nice, Sir Jim, and I want a fair price of £50 million for Tadebo. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Manchester United, Sir Jim, and we want a discount because... We, we both own the same club. I'm Nice, Sir Jim. No, I want uh, I want over the price for him to benefit my football club. But I own your football club and I, I want to make a big impact at Manchester United and Tadebo wants to come. We want a discounted price. No, we want an inflation. You know what I mean? Like, who at, who at Nice is telling the owner, Sir Jim, we won't sell him for a, for a fair price? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it doesn't make any sense. Why can't we get Tadebo at a fair price when Sir Jim owns Inio? He owns it. Like the director of football might be going, we want 50 million. And all Sir Jim needs to say is, shut up. We're selling him for 30. It, it, it's... I still think Tadebo is the right option. And I still think that we should be getting Tadebo for a fair price. And if it works for Leipzig and Salzburg, then why does it not work for Nice and Manchester United? So, you know, like Daniel said, what's 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 Nice to Jim doing? Putting a moustache on and having a chat with himself. Um, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I think Tadebo's the guy to go for and it makes no sense why we pay. I mean, <laughs> we're definitely still Glazer-owned if Nice take us for 50 million for Tadebo when our owner owns Nice, you know? Um, what we're going to do? Sign, you know, we'll sign a player from Tampa Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a hundred million, won't we? You can't even play football. Um, but yeah, so look, the the Tebow thing is interesting, but you can't discount Bremer. I think Branthwaite's a very different thing because he's left-footed, um, and we do need a left-footed centre back. I mean, we all love Martinez; he's massively important for us, and hopefully, he'll have the next two or three years where he hardly ever gets injured. But we do need a left-footed centre back. I mean, that you can't have a situation. I mean, look at Liverpool. If Van Dijk and Canate get injured, they've got centre backs who can still play a high line. It doesn't impact the way they play. Same for Manchester City. Same for Arsenal. When we lose Martinez or Varane, we have to drop ten meters. That's incredible. We can't have that. We can't have that. Um, Anthony, I want to talk to you about Anthony? Um, a few people talking about Anthony today in the press. And effectively, the story is that Man United can't sell Anthony in the summer because the police investigations will still be hanging over him and no club's going to want to take that risk. 
there's an element of truth to that. You, you can believe that if you want to. Uh, Arif says, we love you. Thank you very much, pal. Appreciate the support. Um, there is an element of truth to the fact that if police investigations are hanging over Anthony, then a football club probably isn't going to buy him. I, I take that on board. But you know what? If we just keep it focused on football, there's a very big reason people won't be buying Anthony. We can't sell him for anything less than about 55 million quid and no one's going to pay us 55 million quid. That's why he's not getting sold in the summer. I mean, a mitigating factor might be the police investigations, but let's not pretend that if he didn't have any police investigations, people are going to be queuing up. We paid a lot of money for Anthony um, and no one's going to pay anywhere near that. Um, which is why it's really important people like Jaden Sancho play well for Dortmund over the next two months because he's another player that we might struggle to get money for. Um, Mark, keep up the good work and positivity. You put smiles on thousands of people's faces every day, uh, giving joy to many. Forget the haters, says Leon. Um, I'll tell you what, just as um, as, a, as an aside, I um, if you watch that video I did with Loz about the end of the kickoff, if you know, you know, we recorded another one today that's going up tomorrow, which is all about uh, football YouTube and United Stand features in it quite extensively. And uh, there's a couple of bits in there about the United Stand and uh, the end of the United Stand, the start of the United Stand. So check it out. I think you, you will like it. Uh, tomorrow, I'll tell you when it's out. I think it's about 12 o'clock on my channel. Um, let's talk about Kobe Mainu. So um, England are about tomorrow to announce their squad for the international break. This is the last squad to get called up for training before the Euros, the next squad will be for the Euros camp. Um, so if Kobe Mainu was going to the Euros, he would need to be in that squad tomorrow. It's not over for him, but it probably is. If you're not named in this squad, the only way you're going to get named in the Euros squad is if something amazing happens. So Kobe Mainu, will he be in the full England squad tomorrow? The rumours are no. Uh, he'll be in the under-21s. Uh, Beth was earlier saying typical Southgate, you know, doesn't know his ass from his elbow. How could you take Calvin Phillips and Jordan Henderson over Mainu? I completely agree with Beth. I think she's absolutely spot on. Southgate is clueless. But I've got to say, for the first time ever, Southgate's incompetence has made me happy. I don't want Kobe Mainu to go to the Euros with England. I want Kobe Mainu to have a summer off. I want Kobe Mainu to go and recuperate his mind and body. Because I tell you what, I've seen it with Rashford. I've seen it with Greenwood. We'll see it with Ganacho as well. When they get a summer off, they sometimes come back a lot bigger. And, you know, we saw it with Rashford a few times. That recuperation for their body, mentally and physically, can be absolutely massive. And if Kobe Mainu goes to the England squad and goes to the Euros, he won't get back until early mid-July. Then he's going to go on tour. Then he's going to go into a big season. It's so important, in my opinion, that we nurture and protect our young players. And I look back to the class of 92, the Nevilles, Beckhams, Butts, Skulls, Giggs. They were nurtured by Sir Alex, who would pull them out of the international squads, no problem. I mean, Giggs could have had a lot more caps for Wales. Sir Alex used to pull him out all the time. Also, they were surrounded by really good players who nurtured them. We don't have a good team at the moment for the likes of Ganacho, Mark, Maynou and Hoyland. So they've got a lot more going on, a lot more demand. And we need to protect them. So, look, should Mainu be in the England squad? Probably should. Am I happy he's not going to be in it? Yes. What 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 damages England benefits Manchester United. So I'm actually glad he's not in the England squad. I know some of you aren't. You want to see him in an England squad. He deserves to be in an England squad. I, I do agree. But this will benefit Manchester United. Um, so, look, I'm not that bothered if he, if he isn't going selfishly. I think it will be better for us. Rashford likes the idea of Paris booze, says Liam. Anthony at least defends, not like Rashford. It's a Rashford pile on tonight, Florian. And for the recorded, uh, bring a player from the Buccaneers won't help them with the NFL having a salary cap, says Z3 Music Official. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> uh, Cal says, let's, uh, Lord, uh, I'll, actually, I'll probably pronounce that wrong, so I'm going to say fam. Lord, may Southgate's name men never be mentioned in this chat. Um, and uh, Hamza says Kobe would only be worth going for the experience he wouldn't get game time anyway in which case I think it's a waste of time because he still has to train like a first team player for another month and then he doesn't play anyway um, 
Tony says we can't sell Anthony either because we'd have to pay the rest of the transfer fee we still owe to Ajax. Um, Sally Devil Red Seven says I don't want Manu under Southgate. He's dull, pragmatic football. Would you take Solanke from Bournemouth as a second striker if when they go down? Um, Bournemouth ain't going down, Mac Attack. Let Mainu, says Matthias, finish his first season as a pro before shouting about a place in the England squad. Yeah, and you know what as well? You, you're spot on because we're brilliant at this at um, in this country. We love to over-promote young players and exhaust them. I mean, look at Theo Walcott, look at Michael Owen, look at Wayne Rooney, look at the burnout way before their late 20s. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to see it happening. I really, really don't. Uh, it'd be very interesting with Jude Bellingham, actually. Um, he's got to be very wary of his body uh, because he is a player that could really, um, you know, been playing since 16 years of age. But look, hopefully the people around him have kept an eye on that. Uh, Luton are beating Bournemouth 3-2. I, I wondered why somebody said that Luton are bottling it because they're not at the moment. They're not. Um Rob says, I'd rather he got the summer off as well. Uh, chuck your questions in, by the way. Um, I've basically been through all the topics. We can go back and visit others or yours. Um, second striker, Martinez from Inter Milan says, De Gea. I think the striker thing is really interesting. And look, I, 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 I don't mind. I mean, it's a bit hard in what we do uh, to not go and seek out information and find things out. As I said last summer, I knew about Rasmus for a long time. Uh, who did we buy last summer? I knew about Rasmus for a long time. Summer before, I knew about Inter Anthony for a long time. Um, Martinez, I didn't really know about. I knew about Timber. Uh, that's the summer before. Who did we sign last summer? Mount happened really quickly. Didn't know about that. Anana. Um, but I always like it when you don't know. I, you know, as, as, as a pure fan, I like it. It's 3 3 actually with Luton, sorry. As a pure fan, I like it when you don't know. And I think the striker situation is really exciting because we're going to buy a striker and I don't know who it's going to be and nobody knows who it's going to be. And it's not even one of those where you don't know who it's going to be, but you've got a rough idea of three or four. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what we're going to do with the striker. I, I don't know. Um, and also, um, I would say... I don't know what we're going to do with the midfield either. I, I, I suspect Casemiro may be moved on, wage and age. Who's the midfielder we're going to bring in? The only one that I think has any semblance of uh, uh, soli solidity is Edison from Atalanta, who I know that we're scouting and we really do want. But beyond him, maybe that Anana from Everton. Um, but striker, I can't give you a name. I, you know, I was thinking about it then. I can't give you a name. If somebody said to me, come on, you've got to give us a name of who we're going to sign. Just take, a, you know, an educated guess. I, I don't I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, the only name that keeps coming into my head is Osman and that won't happen. It's too expensive. So I, I, I don't know. Um, and also you've got to compare it to Rasmus um, in the sense that Rasmus has to be the future. He has to be the striker that we build the team around. For a multitude of reasons, talent, attitude, hunger, you know, he's got the lot. So it's got to be a striker that doesn't damage that. Um, you know, I, I would really like an Ollie Watkins. I would really like that type of striker because I think it would, you know, benefit. I'd love an, an Evan Ferguson as well. I'd, I'd love someone like that, but too expensive. But you know what? I don't think we should be restricted by price when it comes to a striker. Because even Ivan Tony is going to cost you 70 million. So we shouldn't be too restricted by price. Um, I, I think I would rather an Evan Ferguson than an Ollie Watkins. I'd like somebody younger to work with Rasmus. Um, but again, I think the price might be too prohibitive. Um, Vlahovic has been mentioned. The Sporting Lisbon striker, who I can't remember how to pronounce his second name, has been mentioned as well. Um... Kim says, yeah, i got no idea who we're going to go for as well. Uh, Ferguson has done nothing this season, says Marvin AM. Yeah, well, that might bring his price down a bit. I mean, I, I think Evan Ferguson has got the attributes to be a really good top-level striker. And maybe the fact that he hasn't done anything this season really could be part of it. Xerxes interesting, you. I do think that Xerxes is in interesting, but I've got to go on what Fabrizio said. And Fabrizio said, 
don't think he suits Man United. Don't think he'll come to United. So, yeah. Um, Sesco. I like Sesco. I do like Sesco. And it's gone very, very quiet on him. Um, Callum Wilson would be a no for me. Benzema's too old, just Keevan. Lewandowski's too old. Um, yeah, look, look. We're, 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 Jao Felix has been mentioned there. He's certainly a, a player that Ten Hag really, really likes. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Kimmich could be a cheap short-term option for midfield. What do you say about Makuku or Sesko? Says Florian. What I say about those are, I don't know. Um, I certainly think Kimmich could be an option. As I said, um, um, I can't remember when I said it to you. Edison, I think Chris Wheeler was talking about it today. Been talking to you about it for weeks. We're 100% scouting him and we're 100% interested and we've got a very good relationship with Atalanta, Ahmad, Hoyland. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that deal happened. Um, he's an interesting profile of player, definitely. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, Sasko's got a release clause, says uh, Mahad. Um, if by chance Rashford leaves and we do get an experienced winger, um, to help Ganacho and Rasmus as fish. Mate, look, the Elisi thing is true. Like, that deal is done in the sense that he will want to, he wants to come to Man United and Man United have held talks and he's got a release clause. So, I mean, it's, do, it's not done deal exclamation mark or here we go, but even Fabrizio said it this week. We, we had it on Sunday. That Elisi deal is in, it's very interesting because it, all the components are there. Discussions, desire to come to the club, fee, it's all there. But as I said to you before about Elise, uh, it's exciting because I don't know how it works. Like, are we are we literally spending £50 million for a bench winger? In which case, wow. Or is he going to start on the right wing? In which case, what the hell are we doing with Ganacho? Because he can't go to the bench. So, you know... Really interesting. Um, look, squad depth is important. I, I I actually agree. If I was the manager and um, I'm giving Elisi, I'm not really bothered I've got Renat Rashford and Ganacho. I'm, I'm like, look, one can start one game, one can come on for half an hour. You don't just need two wingers, so that's fine. But what's exciting is it, a bit about it is our budget isn't infinite. So if you've got a budget of 200 million quid, why spend 50 million of that on a winger when you've got two wingers already? You, you go for priority positions first, surely. So I think it's exciting that we might go for Elisi. Um, Sean from Ireland says, Ferguson's the only one we know we're looking at. Yeah, but his price is very restrictive. And Brighton, as we've seen with Casido and other players, are you know very, very good at holding out for what they want. Um, do you think they'll change their mind on Rashford? Not the first person to say that tonight. Um, look, a lot of you would sell Rashford. A lot of Man United fans would sell Rashford. Um, United have made it very clear that he's not for sale this summer. The player doesn't want to go. Could that change? Anything can change. Do I think it's right that in March they're saying he's not for sale? No. No. I, I don't think that's new. I don't think that's I don't think that's right. I don't think any player in that squad, bar Ganacho, Rasmus, and Mainu, maybe a couple of others to be fair, but the vast majority of that squad should not be getting assurances that they're not for sale now. I think it's the I think it's a bad message. Because you you might know you're not selling certain players. Like, Ineos might know that they're not selling Rashford and Bruno, right? But Rashford and Bruno and the fans shouldn't know that. Because it sends a bad message to the players. Because they know they're not playing well, but they know they're here next year. The fans know they're not playing well, but they know the club aren't looking to move them on. So, I don't mind if they don't want to sell them. But we shouldn't know this in March. And that's that's going to be the issue, you know. If you are genuinely looking to change, then nobody should be safe based on performances this season, bar three or four players. 
Um, anyway, look, great show tonight. Really strong opinion. That's what it's all about. Absolute legends as usual. Uh, welcome to the new member as well. Thank you very much. Get your badge in by clicking the members club. This week's flown by, hasn't it? Um, I actually was like, this week's going to go really slow because we've got a big game against Liverpool on Sunday. Um, it's absolutely flown by. Um, I don't really understand why it's Wednesday night. Um, I seen, you know, it's absolutely flown by. So that means tomorrow afternoon, it will be tomorrow afternoon after the new show, we've got a preview for Liverpool coming up. Um, I was doing the podcast Goldbridge Saves Football just this afternoon and we had Loz on, you know, Loz used to be on the kickoff, Liverpool fan. And um, it got quite back and forth. You know, I've got, I, I, I very rarely do that sort of thing. And it got quite back and forth. It was genuine. He loves Liverpool and hates United. I love Man United and hate Liverpool. And it, and it you know, it got me fired up. I, you know, I'm not conceding an inch here. No, this is Old Trafford. This is the FA Cup. This is Manchester United. And it's against Liverpool. I don't give a shit if they've played really, really well all season and we haven't. Bring it on. I am not conceding this. Somebody actually said to me, it's a free hit for Man United. Doesn't matter what happens. I said, if we win, it's absolutely massive for us. If we lose, I'll be gutted. So bring it on. We'll be previewing that tomorrow afternoon. Oh, I can't bloody wait. Uh, can't wait for it. Um, anyway, take care, everyone. You're absolute legends. I will speak to you. I'm on the morning show tomorrow. Yes, 10 a.m. So I will speak to you tomorrow. Um, don't forget to check out Manscaped. Scan the QR code. 20% off. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. Delivered to your door for free with a 20% off as well. Um, free delivery, that is. Um, take care. I'll speak to you all in a bit.